Good afternoon, Austin. I hope everyone is doing well and getting through this week of record high temperatures. <laughs> probably spending a lot of time inside, maybe getting a chance to kind of use your pools for the, probably not the first time because it's Texas, so maybe you're using the pool all year round for that matter down here most of the time. So today I am joined by Jennifer uh, Porton of uh, Jen's Pro Organization, a uh, home organizing company here in Austin, Texas. How's it going today, Jen? Great. How are you? I'm doing well. Just, uh, you know, Wednesday, got a lot of things going on, so it's always hard. Sometimes as a self-employed person, it's hard to keep track of, you know, what the days are sometimes. So yes. uh, other than that, though, things things are going well. Good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Appreciate it. Um, I usually kind of start off the interviews trying to get a little background, learn a little bit more about um, the people that you know kind of started the companies, run the companies, because I think that's as interesting. Like, obviously, most people can go to somebody's website or have an idea of what a home organizer does, but um, but we don't. A lot of times, what we don't know is kind of some of the backstory about how those companies started, or the or the in the people that run them, kind of what their backstory is. So. I know for most Austinites, um, most of us are not originally from the area here. So kind of maybe what's a little bit of your origin story, kind of where you're from, what brought you to, to Austin? Sure. Yeah, I am uh, originally from New Mexico, born and raised. I grew up in Los Alamos. Um, what brought me to Texas, like I came to Austin in 2009 um, to go to UT. I finished my bachelor's. Um, for applied learning and development. And so I actually taught um, kindergarten here for about five years. Um, I was born an organizer. I've been doing organizing and staging since I was like four years old. Um, but I didn't really think of it as a career at that time. I don't even remember really organizers being a thing when I was in college. Um, I love teaching and I love the kids, but um, it just wasn't serving me anymore. And so I took a pause on that. And um, it was actually when I got pregnant in 2018 with my daughter, really fired that inside me because I wanted to be um, a stay-at-home mom as, as much as possible. I didn't want to miss a moment. Um and so it was somewhat like overnight, I just kind of made a decision and I said, you know what, I'm just going to do this. And I kind of just jumped in completely self-made. I just made my website and started taking clients and slowly grew my business to where it's now. It's exciting. It's like I said, it's just, it's been what I've been doing my entire life. My brain just works like that. And it's okay. just such a blessing to find my true passion and um, be able to do it. It makes it a lot easier to be busy and work hard when it's something that you enjoy and love. Yeah, it's just so fun. I think, you know, the business side of it isn't as exciting for me. And <laughs> it was overwhelming not having any business experience and just diving in and wearing the 40 hats every single day. And just when I'm organized, it's just so worth it. It just all blends together. And it's just I just love it. Nice. Had you um, had you had any, obviously as a teacher, you're not necessarily an entrepreneur, but like, had you had any entrepreneurial tendencies as a younger kid and stuff at all, or not something not that at was all. really on your radar? Not at all. It was actually something that I just wasn't interested in at all. It just kind of like overwhelmed me. Um, but it was just something that I just, you know, just jumped in. I just said, you know, I'm just going to do it. And um I didn't think I was good at it. Um, you know, I just didn't think I would be. But once you try something and like you said, it's connected to something that you love, it, it's a lot easier to to just go it's, with you're, it. You're willing to do some of the stuff that you maybe don't like as much, the bookkeeping, the uh, other uh, other aspects of it to continue yeah. to be able to do what you love to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's all worth it. So you mentioned kind of, you know, some, something you just you know, not one, not, not that you hadn't been doing it a little bit yourself, but really kind of just flipping that switch. Was it challenging to initially kind of find clients that way? Because you hear some people that'll start uh, a small business like that and they'll already kind of be doing it as maybe like a side business for people and then kind of build it that way. But in, in your case, it sounded like it was just, hey, I, I went from teacher and then stay at home mom to deciding to do this. And so 
was it challenging to um to initially kind of start finding those clients and getting yourself out there yeah it was in the beginning um when i look back you know it was it was really like frustrating because i just wanted to get get in and organize and you know nobody knew my name and and you do kind of have to network and and build yourself up and you know find those referrals so you know it was a slow process in the beginning um it took off faster than I thought it would. And, um, again, I just, you know, I really pushed myself. I'm a pretty shy person. And so networking and getting up and speaking was again, something I didn't want to do, but I did it. And it was so worth it because, you know, I built a community and I, and I met great people that all support me and, you know, it's, um, but it definitely was slow (laughs) in the beginning. Yeah. No, 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 again, that's the way, obviously, you know, most small businesses end up failing. So the fact that, you know, you made it past that kind of barrier is awesome just in of itself. But, but even from there, like, you know, most people hear the stories of businesses that turn into huge, you know, huge businesses, but in reality, most small businesses take, take time to, to grow, you know, remains a lot smaller than, than we think of when we think of someone as a business owner, there's a lot of business owners that are, solo entrepreneurs or just have a couple people that work for them that way. And so um, there's not nothing wrong. In fact, a lot of great, great things that go along with being a, a small business that takes, you know, takes its time and kind of keeps chugging along. Yeah. What has been uh, have possibly like say the biggest surprise one, maybe one positive or one negative as far as starting running your own business, starting your own business that you weren't expecting when you first got into it. I mean, I think that the biggest surprise sometimes was my success. You know, I just kind of um, in the beginning, I didn't just didn't know, but I just had this passion belief that, you know, I just wasn't going to give up. Um, And so sometimes I still kind of pinch myself, you know, I'm like, oh, that's I'm still still doing this. I thought I was doing this and it's still I still I still get paid to do this. Yeah. Um, And I think like the hardest part was just balancing everything, just being a new mom, starting a new business, you know, you need money to make money, but I didn't have money. And and so just really being creative and finding ways to get my name out there when I didn't have, you know, thousands of dollars to put on advertising. And I think I answered a question. <laughs> That's good. Was, was Austin, so you mentioned moving here for, uh, to go to school at UT was, um, was kind of moving to Austin uh, permanently kind of the plan from the onset that way, or were you planning to move back to New Mexico or? No, I don't ever want to go back to New Mexico. (laughs) I do miss the food and my family and the mountains, but um, no, I just, I fell in love with Austin the second I got here. And I, um, I did have a dream of, you know, traveling overseas and teaching overseas that never happened. And I don't know if I'll ever leave Austin. I, I love it here so much. Sure. And it's harder to, not, not that it'd be impossible, but harder to do the home organizing stuff remotely or, or travel and do that. Like not in, in today's world, there's a lot of jobs that have started to go remote where people can kind of travel and still do their, you know, tech engineering job or, or other types of things, but uh, a little bit, a little bit more challenging to do so uh, in the home organizing space. Yeah. You'd have to be really big. Like, the home edit or something to sure. to be able to do that someday maybe yeah, but yeah yeah when it comes to home organization do you tend to do more kind of like whole home projects or focus on uh or, more, or your clients ask you to focus on a, a certain room or a certain part of the home does it i mean i'm sure you do both but is there t- tend to be one that's more common than the other it definitely fluctuates every client is so different um and I worked for businesses to get them organized. But typically, it's usually like a space, maybe like a pantry or a playroom. Um, a lot of times, clients will just start with one area. You know, they'll have me in for their pantry and then realize, you know what, I, I need my linen closet. I need my master closet. And so we'll kind of slowly go through their whole, whole home. But it really just kind of depends. I have some repeat clients that I just work with, like maintaining their space. Everyone is so busy that even if they can't organize, they don't have the time. And so they just schedule regular maintenance um, 
so it really does just fluctuate, but pantries and kitchens um, are pretty high up there. Do you have a favorite room of the house to organize? I do and I don't. I literally love everything. So my motto is like, if it needs organizing, I can do it. Um, but I do love pantries and master closets. They're just really fun. They also seem to be kind of catch-alls in a lot of cases too, as people continue to collect new clothes or, you know, as we, as we buy food that kind of ends up hiding in the back of the pantry. And, you know, again, it's hard, harder uh, for people, I think, to kind of keep those places more organized, also partially because they get kind of out of sight, out of mind. Like you notice it when you have to go use it, which is every day for those two areas, but you only have to use them very briefly and then you get to close the door and kind of forget about it. So it's kind of like, eh, we'll get to it later. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I mean, I've had a lot of clients just talk about how life changing it is, you know, because you are in your kitchen every single day and it saves you money because you're not buying food that you already had and you're not expi letting things expire. And <clears throat> the whole family can kind of, you know, take note on everything and, you know, be a part of it. So, yeah, I really really does help. But yes, shutting the door is a very common theme. Just shut the door. Not going to look at it. Not going to deal with it today. It's kind of like if you don't ever watch Friends growing up at all, but it's kind of like the Monica closet of like, if I can just, you know, lock that one closet door, that can just be the place where I don't have to have to yeah. deal with it at all. Do you have a least favorite room to try to organize at all? Or It would be a garage just because it's just so hot a lot. Um, <laughs> and then there's, you know, the risk of like, tarantulas or scorpions <laughs> i haven't had any like bad experiences yet so sure. it's just a lot more um labor you know it's yeah. building shelves and, and things like that so I, I mean i don't do like the built-ins but there is some building that i do so just a little more strenuous but as soon as i see a space that needs organizing i i really do just get excited <laughs> and just want to dive in yeah do you find that a lot of your clients, once they get one of those spaces done, you mentioned, do, do the majority of them or a lot of them end up then trying to get other spaces done because they understand how beneficial it's been for them at that point? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Sometimes they need to space it out, you know, because it is an investment of time and money. Um, but most of the time they're like, okay, this is just adding so much value to my life that it was so worth it that they do just want to move through their home. and get every space organized. Do you run into clients at all who want to get a space organized, but like can't? So like, I guess with the organ, with when they, someone hires you, are they, are you, they just kind of giving you free reign to do whatever you want? Or are they usually involved in that process of like, Hey, I need your help getting this set up the way that I would like it or the way that you think would be best for me. Or is it, so are they, how involved usually are the, homeowners in the decisions that get made? I would say it's pretty split. Um, I do have a lot of clients that are like, I don't care, just do it, <laughs> make it pretty, make it functional. Um, and then I do have some that really just want to work alongside with me. And um, it kind of depends on the space, you know, how personal it is. And and I really try to, um, even if a client isn't involved, you know, whether they, they're working and I'm just in their home organizing, I really have a conversation with them and and understand their particular needs because it has to be functional for them and their system and their family. So that's always tied in, but I think it's just split, you know, and I, I don't prefer either one. I love working alongside the client and I also love just, you know, exploring. I always check in with them and make sure that, you know, the style's right. And, and then I just kind of move forward with the design. Nice. Do you have any, memorable a memorable story or two that kind of pops out for one of the clients that you've helped either maybe you didn't maybe you couldn't for whatever reason you couldn't help help them for for some reason not that that probably happens too often but uh a memorable story there obviously we can keep you know change the names to protect the innocent kind of situation but uh any memorable kind of unique stories that you run into i think i've just had a couple clients reach out to me and just tell me you know just very emotional, just of how um, life-changing it was for them and how 
you know, they've just added, I've just added so much value to their life, you know, just eliminating the chaos and the distractions. So those are like, I have a couple of heartwarming stories, you know, where I've just really helped a family, you know, thrive in their daily life and eliminate, you know, chaos. Um, I did, you know, work with one client that, you know, it's a very sentimental situation where, you know, they lost someone. Mm -hmm. And so you're left with their belongings. Um, and so that's a tough process, you know, but it's, it's really nice to have somebody there to guide them and help them make the decisions on, you know, what, what items sh should they keep and what serves them versus um, holding on to something just because it was somebody they, that they loved. Sure. Yeah. Challenging in a situation like that to, especially for a lot of people again, because a lot of people tend to hold on to more stuff than they should in general. But then when it's someone in a case like that, where they've passed away, it's like you feel like you're throwing part of them and their life away in that case, which, which isn't, which isn't true. Um, but it doesn't mean that that doesn't feel that way potentially for somebody. It does. And I, and I can relate to that. So I just have a lot of compassion and um, empathy towards my clients in that, those situations. So it can be a longer process, but it's worth it to help them guide them through that. Sure. Aside from a kind of more unique situation like that, what tends to be the biggest challenge for someone that's trying to get things or, you know, a room or pantry or their house organized, like what tends to be, is there kind of an overriding theme or factor that pre is pre prevents people from being more organized? I think everyone has a different level of organization. Um, I think that a lot of the problems in most people's homes is conscious or unconscious purchasing. You know, we live in a consumerism world where things are just coming into your home so often, you know, with Amazon and you go to Target and you just, oh, I like that. I want to buy that. And, and you're not really thinking about how the item serves you. And so I think that an abundance of items in your home is really the key to being disorganized because you can only have the space or the item. And so when you have so much coming in and not going out, because a lot of times it's the going out is the hard part. So um, I think that's a pretty common theme in, in a lot of my clients. And it's also too, if you don't have a system and you don't know what you have, you're overbuying and you're buying the same thing. And, and so then you have this abundance of stuff to organize. So when you declutter and let things go and really only have what you need, it's a lot easier to stay organized. Sure. No, it's definitely a one of those kind of first world problems, I guess, for lack of a better word, right? Like that, if you're not able to stay organized, it's be, in most cases, it's because you have an abundance of, again, food if it's a pantry, clothes if it's your master master bedroom, closet and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's very easy to click on the shopping cart in online and say, oh, that looks that looks great, but oh, I don't necessarily have a place in my house. Mm -hmm. that. That'll happen. Uh, so doesn't, that specifically doesn't necessarily happen, but anytime I have, like if I have a client that's moving and if they're getting a larger house, they'll a lot of times be like, wow, I mean, we're going from a two bedroom, you know, apartment to a four bedroom house. Like we're just not going to have enough stuff for the house. And I'm like, you will like every, <laughs> every, everyone finds a way to fill it up. Like I don't ever have someone a year later and they're like, oh yeah, we still just, we have this extra bedroom. We've just never bought enough stuff to put anything in there. And it's just left, left empty like that that doesn't, uh, doesn't ever happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. You'll fill the space. Yeah. For someone who's trying to just be more organized themselves. So aside from being more conscious with their purchases and not adding to what are is more than likely a, a disorganized space. Cause, uh, that in that regard, what are there any other kind of tips or things that you recommend to, for someone that's trying to be more organized? Yeah, I think that once you go through your items and you really um, just keep the items that you love, you need, and that you use, um, making sure every item has a, has a home. Um, if you don't have a place to put it, it's going to become a clutter zone, a drop zone, and you might not even use that item. If it doesn't have a home, either find another home for it or make a home for it. You know, you can create a system for it, you know, just decluttering often and, you know, kind of it's, um, it's a process, you know, once you get organized, 
you have to stay organized, just like you have to clean your house, you know, so just kind of making that time, you know, even 15 minutes a week, just kind of scanning your areas and, you know, getting everything back in order and just kind of taking stock of what you have, I think is really helpful. It's just something you want to be conscious of kind of not all the time, but just letting um, one in and one out is a great rule. If you buy something, you know, that's great. You want to buy new stuff. It's never going to really stop. But taking, you know, 15 minutes on the weekend to go through and letting go of something. You know, I'm having that issue with my daughter, <laughs> her, her, her <laughs> toys, you know, I'm like yeah. so many things that it just becomes overwhelming. And so and then just tackle one space at a time, you know, just if you look at your whole home and you're just stressed out, um, just you know, just do one drawer, one little space at a time so you don't get overwhelmed and burnt out. And eventually it'll all be seamless. So as someone who loves, someone who loves to be organized, has that kind of always been the case for you ever since you were a lot younger, like as a, as a kid, did you have the right number of toys or, uh, or maybe, you know, maybe a, maybe a little bit older that you kind of were organized with your trapper keeper or whatever that was as you were younger kid kind of growing up as well? Yeah, I, I just like grab it. I just can't uh, function or, or like relax in a cluttered room. And, and I just I just have to like I just have to organize before, you know, when my daughter walks around the house and drops bombs <laughs> everywhere, you know, like before we play, I just clear up real quick. You know, it only takes like five minutes. But, yeah, I'm constantly um, organizing. But I mean, I love it, you know, so even on the weekends where I'm like, I, I should take a break. But I'm like, let's let's reorganize this or let's edit this. I have a, I have a weird brain, but I do love it. So for somebody that doesn't love it, um, you know, just getting that system and then just upkeeping, it'll like, it won't take up too much time and it'll be easy to maintain. Like for a lot of things with people, whether it's your fitness, whether it's staying organized, whether it's your finances, like for most people, they tend to try to ignore it as long as they can until it can't be ignored. And then it's a huge, then it's a big job to tackle instead of trying to stay on top of things and then making it, you know, part of their daily or weekly or monthly routine and making it, you know, much, a much easier thing to do less time consuming and just a habit that you kind of get into anyway right like say the one in one out if you're kind of in that routine it's really easy it's much easier to probably do that than you know again at then come spring cleaning time to realize okay we had 97 things come in we better find the 97 things that go out that's a lot more challenging process at that point in time yeah it can be it can be overwhelming um so just start small and be gentle with yourself. <laughs> so you mentioned you, you do some business stuff and some residential. Are there any uh, specific areas that you are trying to do more of? Like, I mean, for, for a business, I guess, is it like business space, like an office space? Or is it like a whole business, like potentially a restaurant or a, a whole office floor or something like that? Or is it more specialized? Most of the time that I've been hired is just like paperwork and like creating a system for the business or this um, small business owner. I have been asked, I didn't actually do the job, but to organize a restaurant. Like I said, if it needs organizing, you know, I I could do it. Setting up an office space, getting a system um, or helping, you know, a business um, thrive better with like an organized space for a restaurant, for example, typically it's it's just families for the most part. More residential, yeah, yeah. individuals, family stuff that way. Um, do you, and then do you have kind of, so like obviously you're here in Austin. Do you have an area that you tend to work in more more so? Like say a lot a lot of businesses, especially in Austin, tend to either be South Austin based or North Austin based. Is that I I'm probably more South. I'm definitely Lakeway, B Caves, Dripping, um, South Austin. But I do have some clients up north and. You know, I've even gone to Taylor and, you know, if I'm not fully booked, you know, um, I can make it farther out. It's a lot like real estate life. Like you tend to be a little bit more kind of geographically centered most of the time. But if but if the situation calls for it, that can can change a little bit, too. And there's obviously plenty of growth happening out in Lakeway and Dripping Springs and stuff yeah. for, for people that will, will need uh, home organization. Yeah, a lot of people moving, which is a great time to get organized, you know, um, because when you move, you tend to let go of a lot. 
because you don't want to move it, hopefully. <laughs> so it's a good purging. And then like setting up your home is is key because then you're set. You know, if you if you wait till you've moved in for a while, then it's a little bit harder. But so I've helped people just on on move day, I go in and set up their kitchen or bathroom. And so it's just set from day one. Do you do, you do much as far as moving out? Like, I mean, so like here in Austin, it feels like a lot of people, I mean, we obviously do have people that are moving just within Lakeway or in different parts of Austin, but obviously a lot of people moving from outside of the area as well too. So in a case like that, if you're moving from California, you're not going to be able to help a whole lot with the people with the move outside of things. But do you, do you get the opportunity for some people locally to help with both the move out and the move in? Cause that would seem to be a perfect opportunity, like you say, to get rid of help, get rid of some of the stuff before you even move it. Cause there's, once you start to move it, it feels like you feel like you put in the work to where you don't necessarily want to get rid of it as you're moving it into the, to the new home. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I've helped, um, families pack up, um, very organized moves. So when they do move in, everything's labeled, ready to go even color coded sometimes, and then they're able to just set up their new space. The organizing products is the tricky part when you move because you have to remeasure and, and a lot of times rebuy products because they don't fit in that space. But um, just getting it done when you move is is key, I think. Fortunate thing, I think, for a lot of people is we tend to move a lot more frequently than families used to so that makes it easier that way um but on the downside though you say then you're moving into a new home that has slightly different dimensions or a slightly different setup so then it you also feel the need of oh i, I need now i need a new bookcase or i need a new tv or i need new stuff to go with the new house and so that then leads to now i have more stuff than i should have yes i've actually had that i've had to move three times in the last three years from the pandemic. So, cause we were renting and each owner sold their home. So right. it's very chaotic, very stressful. And, and yeah, you have to just start over. And if you don't own, you know, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yes. No, the moving has never been, I've done it a handful number of times in my life too, but generally tend not to, because it's like, eh, I'd rather it's not it's not fun. Not fun. <laughs> packing, packing always takes so much longer than you anticipate it should take. You're just like, oh, oh there's some stuff in a room that should only be like 20, 30 minutes. And three hours later, you're like, how am I still packing stuff in this room? I only have three boxes. Oh, yeah. 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 So for people who are looking to maybe get more information or more tips, what are kind of some of the best ways to... Uh, either reach out or kind of follow you. I'm sure you provide some of that information, tips and and tricks and stuff on your website and socials. Yeah. Yeah. My Instagram's great. Um, and then, you know, you can find me on my website and, you know, you can just call me or, or text me, email, all the things, whatever's easier for you. I'm very easy to get a hold of. It's one of the one of the nice things and one of the challenging things as a small business owner is you need to be easy to get a hold of, but sometimes you're like, I'm too easy to get a hold of. Yeah. I had to learn that, um, put up some boundaries where I was like, okay, I'm not going to work on the weekends. Cause I would, I was like, I don't ever clock out. <laughs> you never clock out. So you gotta be quick too, which is. Yes. It's yeah. It's, it's again, it's definitely a, um, it's a balancing act, right? In that regard, the same way that home organizing is, but it's a balancing act as far as like just making sure that you're there when your customers need you, but you also set some boundaries so you can have a life and, and <laughs> again, enjoy the time with your daughter, which is one of the reasons you got into, you know, the stay at home mom stuff and the home organizing stuff to begin with. Right. Yeah. Any kind of final words of advice for someone that's trying to get more organized? Yeah, um, I think I would just say, you know, again, just start small um, or it's if you look at a, you know, your whole house or even a closet, you know, that's filled with boxes and you just want to shut the door, just take one box out, you know, just just move really slow or as fast as you can. And, you know, when it's it's a really pain point for you and you're really just not enjoying it then that's, you know, when you should outsource, you know, and just get some help. I've been hired just to help, you know, sit with somebody and help them declutter because 
they won't sit there for two hours to do it. And they're like, you know, I, I can do this myself, but I won't. So I, I need you to sit with me and just keep me on track. Yeah, I just think it's just start small and then, you know, just start being conscious of what you're bringing into your home and just really, really think about it. Do you do you need this? Do you love this? And are you going to use it? And if it's a no to any of those, then, you know, you can always buy it later, but maybe just take a pause and, you know, in a couple of days, if you still really want it, then you can, you know, do it. Just small practices of just being a little more aware because when you have less in your home, you have less to organize. And so feel better, it'll be better and it'll just be nicer having a calm room. Yeah, it's one of those situations where less is actually more in some cases. It really is. It really is. It's that the feeling you get from an organized clean space is just it's priceless, I think. You know, we are all so busy and we're out, you know, all the time doing all the things. And so when you come home, you just want to decompress and relax, but you're immediately hit with anxiety because of all the clutter or, or disorganization, you know, it really takes away from that rest for you. So I really think that your home is, it's a great place to start, you know, moving forward that cause it's, it's powerful to, to be able to just breathe in a room. Very, very true. The other thing, so as a realtor, to mention to people as well too is that uh well social media can be a great place to kind of get inspiration like don't always think that that's you know that that's usually the highlight of what someone's organized space looks like in a lot of cases or uh right so we, where we have to do um photos for someone's house to list it and it's like oh this, this looks amazing that you know they're able to keep it so organized and in most cases they're not it's just like you say everything's behind doors or their garage suddenly doesn't hold both cars because we had to move a bunch of stuff in there and so mm -hmm. um there's ways especially through social media and online things to kind of use some shadows and mirrors to uh to make things look better than they are, but uh, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't still try to to get to some of those places if you can. But uh, it's all about just taking small steps and moving at your own pace. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to to chat. It's always um, being in the real estate space. There's always a lot of home organization things going on, and we can all uh, be more organized in, in a lot of different things that we do. So it's, uh, great to hear some tips and tricks and some hope that know that there's hope out there for all of us to be a little bit more organized. Yeah. And even if, you know, the budget is something, you know, there's so many creative ways that you can organize a space and not, you know, have to spend so much money. So for anyone out there, you know, there's definitely a way. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time today to uh, to jump onto the podcast and uh, we will talk to everyone soon. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone.